You've probably heard about co-working spaces, but do you know what a micro co-working space is? Because I've been running five of them on my own for just two hours per week and it's how I generated my first million in revenue. A micro co-working space is like the Airbnb of office spaces. You rent a small space, you furnish it and then you sublet it to multiple companies and individuals in need of flexible office solutions. But unlike traditional co-working spaces, micro spaces require very little upfront investments, no staff, which reduces your risks and they actually reach a return on investment in just 12 months. Best of all, by eliminating all of the needless services, the amount of income that you generate per hour of your work is enough to convince you. My name is George and for the last seven years, I've been running a small network of micro co-working spaces in Europe under the name Trevor Workspaces. I actually bootstrapped the first space in a residential apartment with just 4,000 euros. And over the next two years, I managed to automate it and scale it to five locations like this, 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 and this. They've been generating about 100,000 euros in revenue every year, which is quite a lot for my country. So here's all you need to know to start your own micro co-working space. Before we go into it, a quick note, I actually created what I call a business template or a cheat sheet with everything that you need to know to start your own micro co-working space. It's very comprehensive and it is seven years of my experience and knowledge in this industry, everything in one place. So this is what we're going to go through right now. The first question that we need to answer is who is this business for? Well, I believe this business is ideal for young entrepreneurs and professionals who want to start a side business, which was my case. Because of the low risk and the low startup capital and the relatively fast return on investment and the scalability of the business. So let's answer the question of what is a co-working space? A co-working space is essentially a business that provides a ready-to-use shared office to multiple companies and individuals called members. A famous example of a co-working space is WeWork, and here are some of the main services that co-working spaces provide. The first one is the private office. This is uh, an office, a room or area which is physically separated from the rest of the office, but it's under the same roof and it's only accessible to one company that is gonna be your client. The next one is a dedicated desk. This will be a desk in an open space that belongs to one person. And that means that they can leave their computer, their monitors and their belongings and no one else is gonna sit on their desk. The third service is the dedicated team desk. This is an open space where you have one big table for one team and it's dedicated to them. The fourth service is the so-called hot desk. Now, this is where you provide access to your space to a member, either on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, and they sit and work from whatever's free. Like it can be a desk, it can be a couch, it can be like a sofa, whatever. Whenever they find space, they can sit and work. The fifth service is the meeting room. Now, it is advisable that you provide meeting rooms to your clients for free, but many co-working spaces actually provide uh, rentals on demand to external clients who just need a meeting room for like a few hours or a day. Sixth, we have events and event spaces. Now, events are valuable to both members and the co-working business because the members appreciate the knowledge, the entertainment and the social interactions and the business appreciates all of the social media buzz that an event generates and all of the word of mouth and the sponsorship opportunities and the revenue that comes from renting the event space to external clients. And although not necessary at all, a lot of co-working spaces provide ton of extra services like virtual offices with an address, mailing, lockable storage, in-office massages, vending machines and gaming rooms and anything else you can think of. So what would happen if we were to scale a co-working space business down? What if less is actually more? 
So a smaller space equals lower risk because a micro co-working space can be 100 to 300 square meters of space compared to over a thousand square meters for a traditional co-working space. And that dramatically reduces the startup capital required as well as the amount of rent you have to pay every month. Because the space is much smaller, it no longer makes economical sense to have a receptionist. And no receptionist means no salary and no staff and none of the hurdles of that. Because when you provide service only to your members and not to external clients, each of your members has their own access key so they can visit the space 24 seven without your involvement and without reception. And that's crucial. So without reception, the services that you can provide are the following. You can offer private offices, which would be about 80% of your revenue. You can offer dedicated desks, you can offer dedicated team desks, and you can even offer uh, hot desks, but with monthly memberships. No daily passes, no weekly passes, because we want to save your time. And the meeting rooms will be used exclusively by your members, which is a big plus for them. What you will not be able to provide in terms of services without reception are all the daily, hourly and weekly passes that honestly mostly waste your time. The meeting room rentals to external clients, which is sort of an unreliable revenue stream. The events, which is unfortunate, but you don't really need it. And all of the extra on-demand services that you may or may not want to provide. Although some of them can be automated like vending machines. When we talk about office space, we need to define what a workspace actually is. What is a workspace for one person? It's what I call the minimum viable workspace. Members' productivity is highly influenced by their working environment. So a great working environment means happy members and more revenue for you. The first important thing is light. Always try to place desks near a, a big window as a source of plenty of natural light throughout the day and have sufficient artificial light at night. This is very important. Avoid placing desks in rooms without windows. You can use those rooms for meeting rooms. And avoid using cheap LED panels because the flickering of the light will cause your members headaches and they will leave your space. The second most important factor is sound. You need to provide a quiet working environment where, where people can easily focus and that's away from city noise, away from phone calls and away from people playing table tennis. Because otherwise they would just be working at a cafe or at home. The third and arguably most important factor is ergonomics. The chair is the main point of contact for every one of your members because they sit on it for eight hours a day. You have to make sure that the chairs are ergonomic office chairs that are comfortable to sit in. You can lose a lot of clients if you get this wrong. Every person requires personal space, whether they're in a private office or in, a, in the open space. Always try to have a desk of about 120 centimeters to 60 centimeters for every single person and make sure there is sufficient space behind them as well because they do not want to feel cramped. Otherwise, they will just go to the local cafe. When it comes to amenities, the most important thing you need to provide is fast and reliable internet connection. This is absolutely crucial because as soon as someone has a video call with their company, and the connection breaks up, they're probably gonna start looking for another space. And while Wi-Fi is usually enough, invest in premium gigabit Wi-Fi hardware and have in mind that some IT companies may require ethernet connection. It is also very important that to provide an outlet for every single desk. You need one for a computer, one for a monitor and one for a phone and many co-working spaces get this wrong. It is also highly appreciated if you provide a wireless printer and a fridge to the users. And the last essential, which is certainly not least, is great coffee. Because great work starts with great coffee. And if you were to provide a premium coffee included in the membership, then it's just no-brainer. Like, instead of working at cafes or at home, people will prefer to work at your place. Filtered drinking water is also necessary. 
T is optional and some spaces even provide beer taps and fuzzy water, whatever works for you. You've probably heard the term location, location, location. And honestly, location can make or break a co-working space, so do your research. There are two types of locations that will always be in demand, so I suggest you start there. The first one and the one I recommend is the city center. Any company, especially new companies coming into a city, they will look for a place in the city center and that's why it's mostly offices. The second are the business zones. Each city has a few business zones where you have a lot of office buildings in one place, although that may require a lot more experience because it's a different kind of customer. Whichever location you choose, it's very important that you either have good access with public transport or if you're in the city center, or sufficient parking spaces if you're not. Any kinds of restaurants and supermarkets are a huge plus for you as well. Because after all, every day your members have to commute and they have to eat, which is a part of their experience. When it comes to doing market research for your location, there is one great way to do that, although it's a bit dirty, but call all of the co-working spaces in your area and pretend to be a client for one of your biggest offerings. Let's say your main offering is going to be a five-person private office. Call all of the spaces, all of the co-working spaces in the area and ask them for pricing, availability and all the other terms you're interested in. After that, you can even go and get a daily pass to see the space from the inside and see how many people are actually working there because that's how you can judge demand. If the space is full, then demand is high and when you open your space, it's going to be a high chance that people are going to be coming to your space because they don't really have an option if the other space is full, right? But either way, you can judge prices because you will charge 80% of their prices since you don't have like events and well, community and all the extra services. But that's a very good way to gauge the pricing and demand for a co-working space. You can also talk to brokers because they know supply and demand and they can even help you find clients after you open your space. Once you find a location, there are three building types that you can choose from. The first one is office buildings. They are highly competitive. They require mid-sized upfront investments for premium furnishing. They have high rents, but they offset that by giving you access to a more premium audience, more higher paying clients. So I suggest this office type for people with actual experience in office spaces. The second type is industrial buildings. They, are, they offer the best long-term profitability because they require huge upfront investments, but they offset that with lower rents long-term. So I suggest that for people with excess capital and a five plus year investment horizon. The third option are residential buildings and that's my preferred choice because they offer the fastest return on investment with the lowest risk. And they're like the Airbnb of office spaces because they require low upfront investment, they have mid-level range and generally only require furnishing and some office equipment. It's suggested for beginners and young entrepreneurs, but always check local regulations for office spaces in residential. Sometimes you need approval of the nearby residents Get in touch with me if you have any problems with that whatsoever. Now, let's go over the business model canvas. Starting with the value proposition. Like, what do you provide to the users? You essentially provide a ready-to-use office that has flexible terms and it's a social environment for your users. It beats cafes and it beats working at home. The customer segment can be split into two types. The first one are small teams of three to five people that are either micro companies or startup or local branches of bigger companies. And the other segments are individuals, the professionals and the freelancers and the entrepreneurs that just want a nice place to work where they can make contacts. In order to reach those customers, uh, you either, you're mostly going to use Google Maps and coworker.com and social media and your websites. We'll go over that a bit later. And you will be in direct contact with them while also communicating via email and social media. 
In terms of your partners to make that work, well, you need a landlord to rent the space from, and you need a bunch of contractors, mainly for cleaning and maintenance and supplies and technical assistance, and maybe even marketing. Because one of your main activities is marketing. It is also the maintenance of the office and managing your community and being there for all of their requests. Uh, and last but not least, the resources that you have for your business are the office space that you rent, the furniture that you buy, and all the marketing assets that you use in order to promote your space. In terms of cost, rent should not make up more than 40% of your net revenue. I will tell you later on how you can estimate that. The operational expenses would be another 20% and admin expenses about 5%. That leaves you with a very respectable 35% profit margin. It can always go higher and lower, so it's very individual, but that's just a rough estimate. And the main revenue that you generate is going to come from your private offices, probably about 80% of that revenue. Uh, and then 20% from dedicated and hot desks for individuals. And maybe you offer extra services and of course that would be on top of the revenue that you generate. So here's a breakdown of the operational expenses. And they are ordered by most expensive to least expensive. Probably about 50% of your expenses is going to go into cleaning and office maintenance. Then electricity, heating and cooling. The coffee subscription because it's always good to include premium coffee in your offering because that makes you highly competitive. Uh, there are also supplies for the printer, the kitchen, the toilet, the internet contract, building costs and waste management, office maintenance and repairs, insurance, the security systems contract for the security system and of course the water bill. How do we calculate profitability? Like let's say you found the perfect space. We would be profitable. Well, here is a rule of thumb. You can divide the spaces area by seven to find the number of space of workspaces you can actually fit in it. So in our example, 150 square meters divided by seven, that's roughly 21 desks that we can monetize. We then multiply the number of desks by 80% of the typical dedicated desk price in your area. So you go to the local co-working spaces, you ask for their prices, and then your space will be 80% of that because we do not offer the extra services and we do not offer the events and all of the other good stuff that bigger co-working spaces have. So 80% of their price is a good rule of thumb. In our case, that means that we generate $3,360 in revenue. We then subtract the taxes, the rent and all of the uh, administrative and operating expenses and for 150 square meters, we are left with over a thousand dollars a month in net profit, which of course is at full occupancy. You should also have this in mind. Although your spaces would run in full occupancy, there will be months where they would be operating at a lower occupancy. It's important to know that member turnover is usually up to six months, like people looking for a temporary office while their other office is being worked on. Uh, they can be good clients because you can charge them a lot more because no one else is going to give them an office for like three to six months. Uh, but an even better client are those companies that are staying like three and five plus years. At our spaces, we have two companies that have stayed with us for over five years, which is incredible. In terms of finding new customers, it may take anywhere from a few days to up to six months in order to find them, depending on too many factors to be able to predict it accurately. Do your market research, again, go to other co-working spaces, look at their uh, capacity. If they're mostly full, like the excess demand will come to you because they have nowhere else to go or because your offer is better. But since they've been on the market for far longer, maybe their offer is better than yours. So if you lower the prices a bit, and they don't have space to place to put new customers, they will come to you. Now that you have a location and you believe it's going to be profitable, let's talk about design and layout. You should aim for 80% of private offices and 20% of open spaces, since that's where your, most of your revenue will be coming from. And the cool thing about residentials is that apartments are naturally made into rooms that are about 15 to 20 square meters, which is actually ideal for a private office. 
So if you rent an apartment with many rooms, each room can be a private office that you can rent to like four or eight people. You should always try to have at least two toilets in one space. You can sort of go away with one, but it's not recommended. And two toilets will be more than enough for at least 20 people. Each space should have a small meeting room. I know that your space might be limited and meeting rooms don't directly generate revenue when they're included in the price, but this is sort of like a minimum that you should have. Like two people should be able to sit somewhere and to have a private conversation. They should be able to have a video call and generally a place where they can isolate themselves for like 30 to 40 minutes. When figuring out how to position the desks, it is important that they are in an island configuration facing each other. Nobody wants to stare at a wall, so place desks in islands where people look at each other, even if they have monitors. And try to add like greenery and unique decorations that make your place stand out. It will also help you with marketing. If you include some color in the walls, that's also good because like people get influenced by these things and they will be generally more happy and they'll stay with you longer, which increases your revenue. Now, let's do a thought experiment. You made the perfect micro co-working space and you try and you started advertising it and then a huge company comes and they tell you, you know what, we want the whole space to ourselves. Well, that's what's called a service office. It's no longer a co-working space, it's a service office, although it's the same space. And you should never underestimate this model because we're actually running four serviced offices and one co-working space. And this model is working, but there is a caveat. So the good thing is that when you have such a client, you're at 100% occupancy and that's like maximum revenue, right? Which is incredible. And you also have one client, one company to worry about with one contract. Super simple, right? But then there's the caveat because when they leave, you have to pay 100% of the rent. It's not a small company, it's a big company. So now all of the expenses are on you. And this might take a toll on you because it is stressful, right? One month you're generating profit and the next month you're below the line. And you should always keep in mind that finding one company to rent the whole office might take you another three to six months, although that's widely dependent on where your co-working space is and how good your marketing efforts are. And when talking about the marketing effort, I believe in the 80-20 rule. Now, it is very, very likely, at least that's in our case, that 80% of your customers will come through Google Maps or Google Business. Here's how it goes. A customer decides that they need a co-working space or their company is willing to pay for a co-working space. So they just open Google Maps, they go to their neighborhood and they search for co-working space. And that's how they will find you 80% of the time. It's crazy, but it works and it's also free. So make sure your profile is incredible and it's ready to sell. You should have positive comments, friends, peers, members, anybody should leave you a positive comment. You should have quality pictures. You should have a video tour because if your profile stands out, you have no problem finding clients. As for the 20%, you can, like people will visit your website only if you do your SEO. Uh, social media can work for you, but try to include people in the photos. Like people don't want to look at real estate. They want to see it people in the real estate, right? Listings in co-working directories will rarely attract uh, companies, but they will attract freelancers which are coming and which are new to the city, so they can fill your open space. Listings in real estate websites are free and they can bring you companies. Uh, you can work with brokers that can bring you companies, although you have to pay their fee, which is about 10% of the yearly revenue from a client. And Google Ads can generate leads for you if you have the expertise and the budget. But again, the most important thing is Google Maps. Now, I know your head is probably about to explode at this point, but there are two important legal remarks that we need to end with. The first one is subletting. First of all, your landlord should be fully aware in advance that you plan to sublet the space. 
pretty much any contract we signed included a clause that we do not have the right to sublet the space, right? Which wouldn't work for our business. So there needs to be a clause in the contract with your landlord that allows you to sublet the space. The space is your responsibility in front of the landlord and the clients have a responsibility in front of you. So you're like the middleman. In some jurisdictions, your clients will be required to sign an agreement saying that they are okay with sharing the office with other companies and individuals. And when it comes to contracts with your clients, they really value the flexibility, so they should always have the one month notice, the one month cancellation notice. Because that's the thing about flexible workspaces. You charge a premium, but then companies know that they can leave anytime. They're not signing five-year leases, especially small companies cannot afford that. And startups, they don't make sense because this month there are 15 people, the other month there are 50 people, right? So always include the option to have a one-month cancellation notice. Whether you take a one-month security deposit for them or no, it's up to you. And when it comes to serviced offices, you can actually have the minimum, uh, a minimum contract length of, say, six months. And if they leave before the six months, they leave you the deposit and one month extra as compensation. If you're still here, you must be very serious about opening a micro co-working space. And I have just the thing for you. See, I've been running this business for seven years. And again, I'm trying to share all of my knowledge and experience, but each space has its unique problems. So I created a Patreon page with three different levels of services, which I will use as a platform to help each and every one of you to start their own micro co-working space. Every plan in Patreon will include the business template at its most recent version. I will continue improving it so that it ultimately becomes the one resource you need to open a micro co-working space. And there are three tiers of services. The first tier will allow us to communicate one-on-one -on -one via chat. So you have a question about your workspace, you type me a message and I will respond to you. The second tier is for startups who want to grow faster. I will get on a video call with you once a month to discuss what you need and we'll figure out how to solve your problems. And the third plan is for scale-ups where I will dedicate even two video calls per week if needed in order to help you automate and scale your micro co-working space business. So whether you want to bootstrap it, whether you want a startup or whether you're ready to scale it, I'm here for you every step of the way. So go to Patreon, pick a plan that works for you and get in touch with me. This is an amazing business and if you're excited to go down this path, I'm here to help. Let's do it.